I am divorcing my ex-partner, whom I now realize was nothing but a drain on my life, despite investing my time and effort into our marriage, it seems I was the only one who believed in its happiness, Robert, whom I met at a local event, turned out to be unfaithful, engaging with another woman at his workplace even during my most vulnerable moments, like when I was hospitalized with a severe injury resulting in the amputation of both legs, he showed no concern or support, it was disheartening to discover that he was enjoying his time with his mistress while I was enduring such hardship, his ability to utter hurtful remarks without remorse only added to my dismay, in response to his callous behavior, I chose to distance myself silently, however, an opportunity for justice emerged while I was focusing on my career, for now, he may relish his time with his mistress, but he should be prepared for the consequences, those who inflict pain on others without remorse deserve appropriate consequences, I am Mary Gordon, approaching 35 years old this year, since graduating from college, I have been balancing my responsibilities within the family business while working part-time in an office, initially met with skepticism for my unconventional approach, I have grown accustomed to such reactions, while learning the ropes of the family business. I have followed my parents' advice to gain experience in diverse roles, despite the societal pressure to pursue full-time employment, I choose to navigate my career based on my unique circumstances as the only daughter, I recognize the importance of honing my skills to eventually manage the family business independently, thus, I am diligently training myself to handle its affairs proficiently. My encounter with Robert occurred at a local business event, where I was assisting part-time, despite my initial reluctance. I found myself engaged in conversation with him at the neighboring booth, our interaction, starting with polite exchanges, gradually evolved into meaningful conversations during our downtime, he developed into someone I found interesting, and we shared contact details, quickly becoming close enough to stay in touch whenever we had free time, I was shy, but Robert could talk to anyone, so we bonded in a way that surprised me, our shared love of comic books prompted us to visit other comic book related locations and museums, strengthening our bond, we eventually started dating when we walked through the lit streets on our second Christmas night together, Robert stopped suddenly, since the first occasion we met, I've been drawn to you, will you wed me, he inquired, I consented right away, and we started our married journey life after marriage seemed perfect at first, even while work was still hard, coming home to a loved one and having quiet talks at the end of the day made me very happy, but I never imagined that. Six months into our marriage, a seemingly insignificant occurrence would cause our Bliss to fall apart, Robert told us the flowers were a gift from a co-worker and he brought them home one evening to decorate, the gesture intrigued me, so I took the flowers and put them in a vase, Robert showed up the next day with a little box that was wrapped as a wedding present from the same co-worker, there was another vase inside, which seemed pointless since we already had one, feeling a little confused by the coincidence. I looked up the significance of yellow roses, the kind Robert had brought home, online, even after realizing their message was symbolic, please break up, I couldn't get rid of the uneasy feeling, doubts persisted even after explaining it away as pure coincidence however, unwilling to appear impolite, I decided to use both vases, however, as I unpacked the second vase, it revealed itself as an ordinary item, devoid of any significance beyond its intended purpose, this revelation only deepened my unease, prompting me to question the true intentions behind the gifts and the possible implications for our relationship, when I reached for the second vase, a sudden pang of pain shot through my hand, ouch, I recoiled, startled to find a crack in the glass, despite being carefully wrapped in cushioning material, the unnatural damage raised concern, my intuition nodded me, urging me to confront Robert about it, hey, about the vase we received the other day, did you drop it before bringing it home, I inquired cautiously, hoping for a straightforward, explanation, of course not, I wouldn't carelessly handle a gift like that, Robert replied, his expression sincere, recollecting the care with which he had handed it to me, I believed him, however, the crack remained unexplained, you're correct, I sensed his distress and redirected, I need to water the flowers, don't sidestep the question, I insisted, becoming more anxious, what kind of person gave you those presents, she recently started working as an office employee, why is that important to you?
Robert gave a defensive reply, it's more than simply curiosity, though, you shouldn't be concerned about whatever gifts I receive, right? I retorted, seeking clarification, Robert changed his attitude after that day, his tone became more caustic and sarcastic, making me feel more and more uncomfortable, his charges made me uneasy and made every contact feel tense one night. I took advantage of Robert's seemingly uncharacteristically cheerful drinking at home to bring up the topic, hey, I was thinking about repaying the favor regarding the roses and vase from the other day, what do you believe would be beneficial in an abrupt manner, he rejected my offer, there's no need for superfluous items, it would be impolite not to select myself because I received the gift, but I'm saying you don't need to butt in, he said, his words piercing the atmosphere, his rejection unnerved me. As did the mysterious significance of the yellow roses, I had a persistent suspicion that led me to act. Decisively, despite Robert's objections, I hired a private investigator to conduct a covert investigation. Eventually, the inquiry produced findings that illuminated the reality I had been afraid to reveal. Uncertain of what steps to take next, I found myself caught in a whirlwind of emotions. Despite lingering feelings for Robert, doubts about our future together gnawed at me, leaving me paralyzed by the harsh reality that had surfaced so soon after our marriage, entangled in this maze of uncertainty. I opted to bide my time, refraining from immediate action upon receiving the investigation results, perhaps they would serve as a trump card when the time was right, stashing away the findings, I clung to the hope that it was merely a fleeting lapse, returning to the routine of daily life with Robert, I grappled with the weight of my decision, uncertain if it was the right course of action, then, one fateful day at work, while retrieving documents from the warehouse, a simple task took a disastrous turn lost in the dimly lit confines of the warehouse, I stumbled over a ladder, triggering a cascade of documents and containers that buried me under their weight, trapped beneath the debris, I was rendered unconscious, discovered by a colleague from another department and rushed to the hospital, I awoke to devastating news, the manner in which the containers had fallen had inflicted severe injuries, necessitating the amputation of both my legs, struggling to comprehend the Enormity of this loss, I grappled with the bleak reality that awaited me, unable to process the drastic change in my circumstances, I found myself confined to a hospital bed, grappling with the daunting question, what now, without my legs amidst the turmoil, one thought weighed heavily on my mind, Robert, despite the recent tension lingering between us due to the unresolved incidents surrounding the gift of roses and a vase, our marriage hadn't been fraught with major issues until then, however. The uncertainty weighed heavily on my mind during my hospital stay, colleagues took turns visiting me. Their concern palpable despite their busy schedules, their unwavering support fueled my determination to recover swiftly and be discharged from the hospital amidst grueling rehabilitation sessions, I attempted to reach out to Robert several times, but my calls went unanswered, worried about his well-being in my absence, I sent messages, yet days passed without even a read receipt, although my colleagues had informed my family about the accident, ensuring Robert was aware of my hospitalization. His absence left me feeling increasingly isolated, the loneliness, compounded by his absence during my time of need, cut deeper than I could have anticipated, nevertheless, I refused to succumb to self-pity indefinitely, with discharge looming, I resolved to focus intensely on my rehabilitation, even with the daunting prospect of adjusting to prosthetic legs, despite the physical challenges. I was fortunate that my desk job allowed me to continue working, albeit with newfound difficulties. However, the absence of Robert, even after my return home, troubled me deeply, his one-word response upon learning of my impending discharge left me bewildered and disheartened, in the end, it was a close colleague who facilitated my discharge and supported me through the transition back to my regular life, returning home after a prolonged hospital stay proved to be more arduous than I had anticipated. Acclimating to unfamiliar prosthetic legs added another layer of challenge to an already demanding situation, Despite the hurdles, I persevered, clinging to the hope that someday, the answers I sought would come to light after my discharge. Why hadn't I seen him at home for a few days? Was he departing before I woke up? Or was he returning home late at night after I went to bed? Still, there were no indications that anyone else had visited the residence. His entire absence for several days was disturbing, even though in the past he had been preoccupied with work and had returned 
Home late. I hoped he had not experienced anything unusual or unintentional. I heard the door open while I was sitting in the living room staring at my phone and thinking about these things. I turned back and saw Robert holding a big duffel bag at the door. He gave me a fleeting look of recognition, then attempted to get out of the room. Hold on a second. After all this time, where have you been? I asked. Attempting to ignore my concern, avoid bothering me. It's none of your concern, he shot back. In a sarcastic manner, how is it not my concern? You haven't been home for days, and you haven't communicated with me at all. Naturally, I'm concerned, I begged. Well, enough already, he said. It's precisely this kind of pestering that's so annoying, and threw the duffel bag to the ground with a thump. There is never a positive outcome from being with you. You always take excessive risks, as in, you go and get hurt. And I'm busy at work, moreover. The people from your company advise me to visit the hospital. Such pointless intervention. How are you able to say that? That's what wrecked a contract that was ready to be finished. A $100,000 contract gone because of your injury, he went on, his voice revealing his aggravation. Robert slapped his hand on the neighboring dining table just when I was about to question how my injuries could possibly result in the loss of a contract anyway. I'll get unlucky too. Being with a jinx like you, accept your guilt and let's file for divorce, that is. Excessive, why now? Suddenly, I objected, my head spinning with uncertainty, Robert pulled a piece of paper out of his duffel bag and pushed it in front of me without responding to my question, I'm divorcing a parasite who can't even do housework, and I'm demanding $60,000 in compensation, what is the divorce settlement? Yes. It's recompense for the psychological suffering you've inflicted upon me and for interfering with my professional life, he stated icily, could something like that actually exist? Was this the same man I had loved before? A wave of surprise and grief passed over me as I fought to answer, he took a step closer, his presence insisting on obedience, yes should be the only answer you give, I refused to hear anything more, I was too tired to cry, so all Robert could give me was the divorce papers you turn in your divorce decree. I'm too preoccupied, he yelled. I filed for divorce fast and was back on the single scene, big things were coming up at work, so there was no time. To ponder such things, I quickly packed up my things and moved out of the house where we shared our residence. I took my time getting ready to leave, thinking maybe Robert would change his mind, but my aspirations were in vain since Robert gave me a look and clicked his tongue, go quickly and depart, you are no longer welcome here, he said with a sneer when he threw the partially packed bag at the door. Although I never thought our time together would end so abruptly, it was inevitable, maybe it was a good thing, because I never realized how self-centered Robert could be, Robert never really shown any concern for me in the end, I assumed his eyes were on me, but they were most likely always fixed on his distant mistress, I'm angry at myself for not seeing this obvious fact earlier, but anger alone cannot go back in time, I'm now committed to developing into a person who can challenge Robert. Even in the absence of my legs, my bravery hasn't diminished, here, I refuse to give up, time does not wait for anyone, therefore all I can do is try my hardest to the best of my abilities, I'll now get on with my routine tasks, the real estate management I do is my main job, I manage a real estate business that my parents left me, and it brings in roughly $9 million in rental income each year, reaching $9 million in annual rental income was a difficult goal to achieve, particularly in the beginning when I had no prior experience with real estate management, still, the idea of going back to Robert's house kept me hanging on and pushing myself, he never would have guessed that I was making $9 million a year working so hard, in retrospect, it was probably best that I kept the rental money a secret from Robert, who knows what a person who can treat his wife so badly would do if he finds out that I make millions of dollars, I don't always seem to be at the forefront of business, but occasionally I do crucial work, I was leaving that day with a couple of my male co-workers, when I Arrived for a meeting with the stakeholders in a large office building restoration project, I was met by an unwelcome face, Robert was one of the parties involved, he pretended not to see me, obviously planning to ignore me entirely, I couldn't shake the unease creeping over me when I observed the female employee standing beside Robert, it wasn't merely because she was my ex-wife. Their behavior seemed far too conspicuous for a professional setting, amidst the bustling office environment, I 
couldn't help but notice their intimate conversation, which prompted me to confront them directly. I'm pleased to be working together. You're the one who sent the flowers recently, right? The woman spoke amicably to Robert, turning to me with a smile. Yes. Did you enjoy the yellow roses? She asked, catching me off guard. I hadn't mentioned yellow roses, and the casual mention of them suggested she was the sender. Her smile was radiant, reminiscent of a rose, yet her eyes betrayed a depth of complexity, like a murky swamp concealing inscrutable thoughts and schemes, it was no ordinary situation, sending such a declaration of war to a married woman was anything but normal, bingo, she was the one behind the yellow roses and the broken vase, passing it off as a wedding gift, yes, very much, a thoughtful person like you must have wonderful encounters, I replied, attempting to maintain composure, I'm now engaged to marry Robert, she announced proudly, flaunting the ring on her left finger, we just met a little late, but it's a true love story, she added. Seemingly reveling in her conquest, I couldn't fathom why someone would boast about such a thing, but I lacked the energy to argue further. The goddess of love, it seemed, had her own mysterious ways of discerning truth, and our love supposedly proved it. Robert stood smugly beside Angela, who exuded confidence with her over-the-top ideas. I struggled to keep pace with their dynamic, all I wanted was to finish my work and leave. But Angela's sudden shift in demeanor caught my attention, by the way, isn't the person in charge of the office building renovation late, Angela inquired, her irritation palpable when she glanced at her watch, her earlier discourse on the power of love seemed incongruous with her newfound assertiveness, I nearly burst out laughing at the abrupt change, they looked at each other, perplexed, and I said, it's me, this building and the ongoing renovation project are under my supervision. Their faces changed to ones of bewilderment, and Robert's already silly. Expression became much more absurd, Angela shot out, dismissively, you're lying, but her expression said it all, but Robert actually seemed astonished, and he even pointed to me to show that he was still not convinced, that is not possible, is it, Angela said, her tone showing her amazement, you're just a clerk, I was assisting with the family business and working in the office, the family business is this. It wasn't necessary for me to bring it up, but it's no longer a worry of yours, after. Verifying with other staff members and stakeholders, Robert and Angela appeared to be progressively coming around to the truth, even though they still seemed skeptical at first, I laughed at Robert's ridiculousness when he tore my business card to pieces during a name card exchange, not possible, this I cannot accept, I had had enough of you, you part-time office worker that you were, is that not a lie, Robert objected. A tone of skepticism in his voice, it's not a hoax, and I've never witnessed. Someone so tearing up a business card, in all the years I've worked in business, I've never met rudeness like this, I replied coolly, the discussion to renovate the office building went smoothly, but the couple's expressions revealed their inner agony, it must have come as a startling realization to them that the building owner was indeed someone they had denigrated. Robert's constant attempts to look me in the eye during the meeting proved to be annoying, even though he was the one who started. The divorce, his actions suddenly seemed inconsistent after the meeting, there was talk of having a get-together, given the likelihood of working together for an extended period, it seemed wise to get to know each other better, the gathering was small, but finding a place on short notice proved challenging, and there were difficulties with the reservation when everyone busied themselves with arrangements, Robert approached me and slipped something resembling a piece of paper into my hand. Sensing something amiss, I unfolded the note to find a folded piece of paper and a piece of candy inside, reading the note, it said, can we sneak away together, I was appalled, was he mistaking this for some kind of mixer, asking an ex-wife to sneak away together was simply wrong, disgusted, I looked at it twice, and noticing my reaction, Robert winked and made a shooting gesture with his fingers at me, despite it being a business-related social event, where one should stay till the end, his behavior was utterly inappropriate, the idea of continuing to live close to Robert was too much to handle, I calmly conveyed the circumstances to a subordinate and left the meeting without causing too much of a stir, I hurried through the throng, praying Robert wouldn't notice my sudden disappearance after five days, I was flooded with a ridiculous amount of missed calls, all of which were from Robert. He had made 33 calls and left many messages, his constant phoning during business hours gave the impression that he had a lot of free time, the constant calls were annoying, so I decided to give him a call back, what is it, 
your repeated calls are annoying because I'm busy, simply state what you must, I said, getting right to the point, hey, why don't we give it another try, over the phone, Robert's voice could be heard speaking in a hopeful tone, what topic are you discussing, has your mind been clouded by stress, I answered, puzzled by his abrupt shift in tone, I'm serious here, I came to, the realization that you, Mary, are priceless, Robert went on, his voice growing nostalgic, you made me see that, drunk in your own words, Robert, I shot back, not amused by his corny monologue, you're the one who initiated the divorce, ignoring me when I was injured, I didn't neglect you, simply put, this was my cue to use Angela Morgan as my trump card, I had already had you look into it, even when I was in the hospital, I knew you were going to her apartment after work on weekdays, Robert said, Sounding remarkably casual, I was at Angela's apartment, yes, he continued, seemingly in an attempt to defend his conduct, I assumed you were in the hospital, so you'd be alright, apparently, you were occupied with Angela, it's none of my business now because you're remarried, I shot back, feeling a mix of resignation and rage, she simply mislead me, there is yet time, Robert urged, clearly desperate, let's start anew, I had trouble understanding his logic, I assumed that without me, you're having trouble, I can get you a maid if you need help, I have no problem with others staying in the house, he said, Robert spoke boldly on, as if he had just had an epiphany, while I stood there dumbfounded and horrified, I'm considering giving up my work to help you, I'm ready to do that, which is why I'm phoning you right now, you've always prioritized your work, to think that you would abandon your career to care for me, yes, work is irrelevant if it means living with you once more, I'm quite moved, I felt shocked by his boldness and hung up the phone, Robert, knowing him, would probably do just as I expected, I made my way straight to City Hall without any hesitation, my submission there was a message of non-acceptance, by submitting this, I would be able to stop any marriage registrations from being handled without my permission, Robert gave me a call two days after I visited City Hall, hi, this is me, I overheard an odd story at the City Hall counter, weird like what, I questioned, getting, Ready for whatever answer might come next, well, they said they won't accept it or something like that, Robert stated, clearly displaying uncertainty, what do you wish to convey, I urged, fully knowing the answer, just spit it out, I'm not at liberty all day, the marriage registration, that is, I left my job because we were reuniting, and now everything's gone wrong, Robert said, trying to sound nonchalant despite the fear in his voice, I made the choice to be honest with him, they won't accept it, I said in a serious tone, well, naturally, it is absolutely abhorrent to attempt to file a marriage registration without consent, does that imply that I am ineligible to marry, now that I've quit my job, what should I do, Robert's voice was shaky with doubt, you left your work on your own volition, didn't you, I firmly said, I never told you to quit, and you rushed into getting married on your own, and then I quickly hung up, I realized I ought to have blocked his calls on my phone a lot sooner of life, was quiet for a while, but then something unexpected happened, a messy looking woman in front of me, her eyes were hard and strained, and her hair was a tangle, you are solely to blame for my current situation, Robert has moved on, and I no longer speak with anyone at the company, how do you intend to proceed, accept accountability, she let out a frantic shout, her voice instantly identified her as Angela, even though I didn't know her for a second, she no longer boasted about the yellow roses, with the same pride, she raised her voice furiously. Giving off the impression of a tough lady, seeing such a scenario up close was distressing, even though I knew I had nothing to worry, are you referring to Robert, let me go now, he's no longer a worry of mine, you shouldn't worry about it, I said in a cool manner, I lost my job because of you, I'm broke, you truly are unlucky, with a quivering voice, Angela accused, that's when I had a realization, jinx, you say, you two are so similar to one another, you were meant to be together, I said firmly. Jinx, what do you mean by that? Angela hit back defensively, that's what he called me too, just like a parting shot when things don't go his way, is it bad to just state the facts, what's not right, would you mind considering it for yourself, you're annoying me, and I have no duty to teach you anything, I'll contact the cops if you harass me in this manner any longer, alright, I abruptly ended the call with a strong warning, I was having trouble keeping my balance as my prosthetic leg nearly came off as Angela, full of rage, 
pounced at me during the altercation, my personal alarm, which I usually carried, went off and shocked everyone nearby as I fell, the cops showed up as Angela was still grabbing at me, they had evidently been contacted by someone who had seen the disturbance, I asked the cops to examine the security cameras after describing the incident to them. In order to stop such instances from happening in the future, they certified that I was not at fault and issued a restraining order, why do I always have to suffer like this, Angela bemoaned, clearly frustrated, maybe it's because you decided to have an affair with a married man and tried to snatch him away, I said strongly, also, I will be contacting you through a lawyer to demand compensation, so please be prepared to deal with it, I could not stand by and let Angela get away with what she had done, I thus made the decision to seek recompense. I wanted her to pay for the affair and her part in ruining my marriage to Robert, subsequently, I learned via word of mouth that Robert had wed me, envisioning a luxurious existence supported by my rental income, only to discover that he was jobless and dependent entirely on my rental income, however, because of her involvement with a married guy, Angela became disowned at work and had to continue working to support herself, she also demanded payment from me, it was the result of having money and short-term desires cloud judgment, I cut ties with both of them, they ought to behave properly and learn to regulate their emotions as grown-ups, living off the rental income, I concentrated on my real estate business in the interim, although it may seem enticing, living off rental money requires a lot of work, I was under constant stress and tension since I was doing high-stakes projects all the time, I made the decision to have a pet in an attempt to improve my life. I genuinely felt that having a pet may be helpful, as I had heard, my dog Coco's games allowed me to forget about the difficulties and obstacles at work, I made a commitment to live each day with appreciation, determined to fully appreciate and cherish the happiness and joy I currently have, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story, do you truly believe I've fallen deeply in love with you, I had a realization that David's love for me was lacking, this harsh truth left me feeling dizzy, and David's subsequent insults felt like salt rubbed into the wound, all I desired was a partner who could manage household chores while I juggled my demanding work schedule, however, when you fell ill and ended up in the hospital, David's disdain for caring for an ailing partner became apparent, he expressed a desire for a divorce, plunging me into darkness, however, a glimmer of hope emerged when I recalled something I had seen earlier, with this memory, fear dissipated, and I regained my composure, I responded to David, acknowledging his decision but revealing my newfound strength, buoyed by a powerful ally, my name is Michelle, a 45-year-old newlywed housewife, I had never married until my mid-40s, leading a simple life revolving around work and occasional outings for drinks and shopping, hope for happiness flickered during my annual ritual of buying lottery tickets, it was through a marriage app tailored for people in their 40s that I encountered my husband, David Owen, he, a department head in a company with a substantial workforce, and salary, appeared serious and hardworking, I was intrigued by his single status, prompting me to inquire during our initial meeting, his shy admission of being preoccupied with work resonated with me, given his managerial responsibilities, however, his underlying loneliness led him to explore the app, a vulnerability that charmed me, our connection deepened when David confessed his disbelief in finding genuine connection through the app, similarly, I expressed gratitude for meeting someone as Remarkable as him, our mutual astonishment at our unlikely encounter laid the foundation for considering marriage. Six months after meeting, we tied the knot. On the eve of our marriage registration, I purchased a lottery ticket, a symbolic gesture of hope for a shared future. It could be my last stint as a single person. I pondered quietly. Right after our wedding, David made a request. I'm swamped with work. So dividing household chores is a bit difficult. I want you, Michelle, to quit your job and stay at home, well, my mother was a housewife, so I didn't mind focusing on household chores, I agreed to his proposal and bid farewell to my job, commencing our married life, David appeared content, relishing my cooking and praising its flavor, it was a joy I hadn't experienced during my solitary meals before, however, little did I know, this happiness would be fleeting, just a month into our marriage, David's demeanor underwent a drastic shift, initially, even if he worked late, he would come straight home, but recently, it became common for him to return late at night, 
claiming he had already eaten and didn't require dinner, suppressing my disappointment, I cleared away the untouched food, even on the rare occasions when he did eat at home, he found fault with the meal, I come home tired, and you serve me fish, I don't like it, I can't eat such plain food, make something with meat, he demand, but I don't have any meat today, I'll make a meat dish tomorrow, so please bear with it for today, I'd plead if you don't have it, go buy it, I want meat, so make it now, he'd retort, despite the late hour, his arrogance extended beyond meals, no matter how diligently I cleaned, he always found something to criticize, being tall, he'd point out high places I couldn't reach without a stool, scolding me for leaving dust, I can't reach those high places often, I'll clean them during the thorough cleaning, please don't point them out all the time, I'd implore, but he'd respond, with disdain, belittling my height, so you're going to leave dust in high places until the big cleaning, short people really are useless, he'd sneer, it hurt to be demeaned for my stature, but arguing back only invited more complaints, thus, I endured silently taking advantage of this, David grumbled about every household chore I performed, while he lounged around, claiming fatigue, initially, I believed him to be kind and gentle, but his true colors emerged over time, despite this, I convinced myself that such was the nature of marriage at this age however lately i've been experiencing heart palpitations and chest pains what's wrong with me i wonder well i think it will pass soon i reassure myself hoping for a brighter tomorrow i grew increasingly concerned about the discomfort in my chest yet i chose to disregard it for a while perhaps that was a mistake with time passed my condition deteriorated and i began experiencing shortness of breath and dizziness unable to bear it any longer, I resolved to undergo a medical checkup at the hospital. It turned out that my symptoms stemmed from a heart condition induced by stress, the relentless mental strain I endured each day had inflicted significant damage on my body, consequently, I had to be hospitalized for a period, upon learning this, I went home to prepare for my hospital stay and informed David Owen about it, however, instead of displaying concern, he furred his brow and uttered, what, a long-term hospitalization, seriously, what about the housework, who's going to manage all of, that, I'm sorry to inconvenience you during my hospital stay, I responded, attempting to placate him, please manage with takeout or prepared meals, the laundry can go in the dryer, and the house shouldn't get too dirty with just you around, are you saying I have to do all the housework, that's impossible, I'm too busy for that, he retorted, his irritation palpable, it's just until I get discharged, I pleaded desperately, but David remained in a sour mood, great, you can't do anything but housework. And now you're talking about hospitalization, you're really useless, remember this when you get discharged, feeling disheartened and overwhelmed, I began preparing for the hospitalization alone, inundated with his harsh words, it felt as though I was fleeing from the present situation, and despite knowing it wasn't my fault, I couldn't shake off the guilt, the next morning, David was still in a foul mood and didn't even bid me farewell when I headed to the hospital, he simply proceeded to work. Without a second glance, during my hospital stay, David never visited me, confirming my initial suspicion, sensing his absence, I had brought all my change of clothes with me, however, the hospital room felt incredibly lonely without any visitors, to pass the time, I resorted to surfing the internet on my smartphone daily, then, one day, I received a peculiar message in my messaging app from David, however, its contents left me dumbfounded, Katie, I love you, I'll be done with work soon, wait for me, just when I was about to delve deeper into its meaning, the message abruptly vanished, indicating that it had been deleted, who was this Katie, the message was tenderly worded, a sentiment David had never expressed to me, perhaps he was having an affair, as this disquieting thought consumed me, the pain in my chest intensified, feeling like my chest was being squeezed, I hastily pressed the nurse call button, Fortunately, it was just a minor attack, and the pain gradually subsided after about five minutes. Following the nurse's advice, I attempted to focus on something enjoyable, but my mind drew a blank then, a glimmer of distraction came to mind, I recalled the lottery ticket I had purchased before registering my marriage, it struck me that the results might have been announced recently, with trembling hands, I checked the winning numbers on the official website from my smartphone, to my astonishment, the words, congratulations on your win, flashed on my screen, I couldn't believe it, excitedly, 
I counted the digits of the winning amount. Just as I was processing the unexpected turn of events, the door to my hospital room swung open, and in walked David, accompanied by an unfamiliar woman in her early thirties, sporting a flashy appearance, hey, how's it going? David chimed in a carefree tone, how can I be fine, I'm hospitalized, and you didn't even bother to show your face here until now. I retorted, my frustration evident, of course, who do you think had to deal with all? The trouble, work, housework, it's been tough for me, David replied, showing no concern for my condition, only his own burdens, perplexed, I responded, oh, is that so, sorry for the inconvenience, unfazed by my displeased tone, David smirked and remarked, Michelle, you really are charmless, well, it's fine, from now on, you won't have to worry about inconveniences, take your time in the hospital. His cryptic words left me feeling uneasy, then, he casually draped his arm around the woman's shoulder and boasted, now she's taking care of my needs, right, Katie, Katie, I stammered in disbelief, my heart sinking as realization dawned, the woman snuggled up to David, flashing a coy smile, who is that woman, I demanded, struggling to comprehend, you're surprised, right, you were useless, so I reached out to my ex-girlfriend, Katie, she still loves me, so she came running right over, David declared, oozing with smugness, attempting to maintain my composure, I inquired, oh, an old acquaintance came to help out, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, I need to stay in the hospital for a while longer, when I spoke, they both erupted into laughter, this wife, she's a bit odd, isn't she, she doesn't get it at all, David remarked casually, unable to comprehend the depth of betrayal, I struggled to find words, realizing that this situation was far more complicated and hurtful than I had ever imagined. Michelle had never had a boyfriend until her mid-forties, when David and Katie looked at her with utter contempt, she knew all too well that they were having an affair, though she wanted to confront them, she understood that getting worked up would only strain her heart further, thus, she deliberately kept her response calm, however, David, seeing her silence, uttered something unbelievable anyway, I don't need a frail old woman anymore, from now on, I'm staying with Katie, he declared, thrusting a piece of paper with green writing at her, an indication of his desire for a divorce, despite her. Efforts to maintain composure, Michelle couldn't hide her inner turmoil, why, an ex-girlfriend means you broke up once, right, you were with me, and now you want to go back to her, she questioned, her voice laced with sadness, David responded with disdain, do you really think I've fallen seriously in love with you, I realized that I had never loved you, Michelle felt the weight of this harsh truth, her vision spinning with disbelief, David continued to berate her, expressing his desire for a wife solely to manage household chores, especially in light of her recent illness, when Michelle's world darkened even more, a memory flickered in her mind, something she had seen earlier, drawing strength from this recollection, she regained her composure and retorted to David, fine, David's eyes widened at her unexpected reaction, huh, are you serious, without me, you have nowhere to go, he challenged, I'm not acting tough, but make sure you properly file this divorce paper, okay, Michelle replied. Calmly, her resolve unwavering, she signed the divorce paper handed to her and returned it to David, okay, I'll take care of it, I'll file it tomorrow, David muttered, still looking puzzled, meanwhile, Katie stared at Michelle with a contemptuous gaze and a sly smile, you must have accepted your fate against my youth and beauty, right, she taunted, yeah, right, I'm so proud to think I could make Katie the number one at the nightclub, even when we were dating, Michelle responded, her tone tinged, with resignation and a hint of bitterness I had anticipated that she would leave an older man like me, regardless of my popularity at the nightclub, my devotion had always been to David, once the divorce proceedings began, I suggested we promptly submit our marriage registration, to my surprise, David's preference for club number one came to light, a revelation that left me speechless. I had assumed he was diligently working all this time, but it turned out he frequented such establishments. Recollection surfaced of the days he returned home inebriated after claiming overtime, his excuses now appearing dubious, Katie, noticing my skepticism, interjected, dismissing my presence with finality when she clutched David's arm and departed. When I endured my hospitalization, David's decision to betray and remarry weighed heavily on my mind, though parting ways would bring relief. I resolved to make him taste his own medicine, contemplating revenge, I meticulously crafted my plan while convalescing in the hospital, upon receiving medical clearance for discharge. 
I returned home to find myself alone in our former abode. As David had moved in with Katie, I wasted no time, immediately cashing in my winning lottery ticket at the bank. While awaiting the substantial sum, I embarked on a quest for a competent lawyer. Delving into David's past relationships became my priority. Was his involvement with Katie truly over before our marriage, or had they maintained their affair? If their liaison persisted, I could seek compensation after securing my lottery. Winnings, I enlisted the services of a lawyer and initiated an investigation. The findings corroborated my suspicions. David had indeed sustained his relationship with Katie. She, a former nightclub worker, held a significant allure. Just as David had alluded, their relationship predated ours, continuing unabated even after our marriage. Essentially, David had wedded me while maintaining his bond with her. Relegating me to the role of a mere housekeeper, the revelation ignited a fire within me. Yet I knew I had to maintain composure to safeguard my health. If I were in better health, I would have immediately confronted David and demanded compensation. However, I opted to entrust everything to my lawyer and await the opportune moment. Shortly thereafter, David called me, questioning the sudden appearance of a lawyer and the demand for compensation for his infidelity. When the lawyer asserted the need for swift payment or else legal action would ensue, David attempted to discredit me by questioning the source of my funds and insinuating the exorbitant hospital bills I must have incurred, his ignorance of my financial situation backfired, when I calmly pointed out his responsibility for contributing to my hospital expenses, which the lawyer confirmed could be claimed from him as well, David's careless words shifted the balance in my favor, leaving him momentarily speechless. I could discern Katie's voice in the background, suggesting she was eavesdropping on the conversation. Despite her interference, I remained composed and asserted my right to claim compensation. Given the circumstances, David, emboldened by Katie's presence, attempted to refute my claims, but I calmly countered with evidence of his continued relationship with her post-marriage, thanks to the thorough investigation conducted by my competent lawyer, his attempts to dismiss the situation as bluffing were futile, especially when I revealed the meager monthly allowance he provided me despite his substantial income, David's unfair treatment of me became glaringly obvious, and each attempt to discredit my claims only served to deepen his predicament, I made it clear that meticulous records of our household expenses, meticulously kept through a budget app, would stand as undeniable evidence in court, despite David's skepticism about my lawyer's competence, I provided him with the link to the law firm. Confident in the strength of my case, I discovered online that this is the law firm I Hired, you must have seen their business card, the lawyer's photo was on their website, David seemed shocked to realize it was a renowned law firm, his question about where I got the money to hire them prompted me to reveal the truth, I had actually won $5 million in this year's lottery, including the consecutive numbers prize, my revelation left David and Katie stunned. David insisted he had never known about me buying lottery tickets, I explained that I purchased them with money I had earned. Before our marriage, deeming it unnecessary to report every detail after a brief silence, David's panicked voice broke the stillness, asking if I was home and promising to come over immediately. Curious about his sudden urgency, I waited. Twenty minutes later, David arrived alone, surprisingly cheerful, he proposed dividing the assets, which struck me as absurd. I couldn't fathom his entitlement to any portion of the lottery winnings, given the circumstances, despite his plea that I bought the ticket before our marriage, I firmly asserted that I cashed it after our divorce was finalized, citing his infidelity as the cause David attempted to negotiate, suggesting he should at least receive a quarter of the winnings as a former spouse, rejecting his proposal outright, I emphasized my need for compensation, David's desperation became palpable as he scrambled for an angle in his favor, finally. He confessed to being deceived by Katie, attempting to elicit sympathy, however, his plea fell. On deaf ears, I remained resolute, unwilling to entertain any division of assets or compromise on compensation, she just approached me because she was interested in my job, she works nights, so she has a lot of clients, and I have a suspicion that she may also be seeing other men, what then are you attempting to say, in essence, I'm not a cheater, rather, I'm a victim who was duped. I'll break up with her and promise not to cheat on her again, of course, can we now begin anew, his ludicrous. Reasons shocked me, you really believe that kind of crap will work, without a doubt, you cheated, I remarked, stirring pictures of David's adultery across the table, look, there's plenty of evidence right here, the photos showed David walking into and out of a hotel, 
holding Katie's arm and appearing to be having private conversations in a park area, they were unmistakable proof of his adultery. David snatched up the pictures and murmured, damn it, in exasperation, and then, to make matters worse. There was Katie, she had seemingly followed David, but she had been keeping an eye on things from the shadows, David, tell me, who are you labeling a liar? Give up uttering whatever comes to mind, I take it that you were the one who came to me in tears, Katie said with a sultry tone, she was incensed after hearing all of David's self-serving excuses, just because I used to work at nightclubs doesn't mean anything to me, even after our breakup, you have always been adored by me, how are you going? To respond to these emotions right now, two women surrounded him, and David felt absolutely overwhelmed. David learning to rely on me made me very happy. I'll be demanding payment from you as well because you stepped on these feelings. I declared, why do I have to pay compensation to my affair partner? David objected, partner in an affair. We were wed for more than a month in law, didn't we? I shot back, well, technically it was an affair. David's upset expression nearly made me laugh out loud, David. You can't sweet talk your way out of understanding a woman's heart, my statements appeared to have utterly depressed David, and the issue appeared to have been settled, I made the decision to give one more listener a call, you can come out now, what, is there still someone present, a person who was waiting in the adjacent room entered and asked David, hi there, I've heard it all, the visitor remarked, I said, oh, you're the lawyer from that time, I was told by this attorney to get in touch with him at, any time if things went wrong, I contacted David right away when he announced that he would be stopping by my place. The attorney had subtly gone through the rear entrance of the house and was waiting in the adjacent room. Mr. Owen, Michelle already informed you that you are not entitled to a property portion of the compensation. We will reassess that case in light of Katie's involvement, the attorney said when the attorney told David this. David was left agape and in a trance, I was at last relieved that everything had been handled, David Owen then paid me back, and we divided his income between us as part of our property division agreement after divorcing Katie, David appears to be living alone, but David's business is a big organization with tight guidelines, his employer found out about his extramarital affairs and many divorces, and it seems he was let go, his flashy connections with women were his first claim to fame, and this attracted the notice of his superiors, for this. Reason, word of his recent divorce scandal spread rapidly. Although I haven't seen David since, I was informed of this information by someone, it was his companion in the affair, Katie, none other. Katie came to my house to apologize and seemed sorry for what she had done to me, I apologize. Katie stated, please wait, I will pay the compensation for the affair gradually from my earnings, I sincerely apologize, but I turned down Katie's offer of payment. It appears that she hasn't had a stable job since quitting, she used her funds to get by at first, but her extravagant spending from her nightclub days persisted, and now she has no savings left, she sought to hang on to David, who was wealthy, by all means because of this, it's true that I loved David, even though I realized that sounds like an excuse, I recalled the sincere expression in her eyes when she declared her unwavering love for David, that's the reason I chose to let Katie and I get along just fine, conversely. David was facing financial difficulties and lost his job as a result of having to compensate Katie and me as a result, he couldn't pay the rent and was forced to vacate the apartment he had moved into, then he turned to face me, his eyes beseeching Michelle, I made a huge mistake, I apologize for this once, going forward, I will follow your instructions, please allow me to remain here, David's voice was somber as he talked, sure, you can stay here as long as you want. I said nonchalantly in response, are you serious, oh, I'm so grateful, David shouted out in gratitude, I allowed David to stay in the house for the time being, but I packed my things that evening while David was sleeping, I had just finished making the necessary arrangements to move to a new location that I had been searching for, David woke up before daybreak to find the moving truck already there, what's happening, why do you have so much stuff packed, where are you heading, confusion gripped David, he questioned, yes. I am relocating today, you are aware that this home is rented. 
Correct. You will thus be responsible for paying the rent going forward. It's $11,000 a month. I said coolly, what, for now, I just cannot afford that, I was duped by you, David objected, I did not deceive you, I simply told you to stay here for as long as you like, good luck paying the rent, then, I said, bye bye, and walked out of the house, I've cancelled my cell phone and made sure David can't get in touch with me since then, I didn't give him my new address, of course, I had the good fortune to meet the landlord of the house David and I shared at some point in the past, it appears that David left because he was unable to pay the rent when I inquired about him, none of us know where he went now that I've abandoned David, I'm enjoying a lavish lifestyle in the condo of my dreams that is a high rise, this is a prime location with a panoramic view of the city from the window, in terms of my health. The stress of being apart from David has totally subsided, I can work out every day. Because the first floor of the high-rise condo contains a fitness center, I've also begun maintaining a Pomeranian, which I've always enjoyed, because it's pet-friendly. This female Pomeranian, Mocha, is now a priceless member of my family. That being said, I can't just sit around doing nothing with my $5 million lottery winnings. I made the decision to be rehired by the company I worked for prior to getting married because I've always enjoyed my job. Interestingly, the day I relocated, I came across a mid-career recruitment advertisement on a work site. Upon asking, I discovered that they were having trouble hiring qualified staff once I departed. My supervisor was happy when I sought to be rehired. I feel at ease now in my accustomed workplace and comfy home. I now lead the perfect lifestyle. I didn't have a great marriage, but going forward, I want to enjoy living my life the way I want to right now. That brings me the most joy above is today's story. If you like it, please. Subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.